Hi, and welcome to Are Your Data Modes Transmissions Clean? video tutorial. I'm Nige, G7CNF. This video tutorial is exploring the reasons for why we are seeing so many dirty data modes signals across the amateur radio bands. I'm going to be using Power SDR in combination with Ham Radio Deluxe's DM780 and WSJTX. There is no implication that either of these programs are in any way substandard. Most SDR based digital modes ops use a virtual audio device to transport the AFSK between Power SDR and the data mode program. Legacy radio users use a physical interface. The video is going to look at hidden settings within Windows which frequently catch people out and the consequences of ignoring those hidden settings. In the video I'm using Power SDR MRX PS along with an HP SDR Anan 100D SDR transceiver. However, the principles in use here apply to all versions of Power SDR and indeed to, uh, to a wider scale, most legacy radios too. The HP SDR architecture radios are full duplex, which means it is possible to continue monitoring the receiver whilst the transmitter is engaged. Because of that, it simplifies being able to demonstrate the issues around which this video is based. In my previous video regarding setting up Power SDR for digital modes use, I recommend setting the VAC TX gain, virtual audio cable TX gain, to minus one. However, due to other settings, inside windows which are not normally visible or taken into consideration, that minus one can well be inadequate and result in unpleasant IMD. I'm now going to demonstrate HRD's Digital Master DM780 transmitting. It's set up in much the same way as most people would have the software set up. I'm going to in, uh, initiate ACQ in a moment. As you can see, I have here the VAC TX gain set to minus one as per my previous recommendation. I put the radio into CQ. Let's take a look at the appearance of the transmitted signal. With a, t a VAC gain of minus one, the ALC here is showing zero dB. However, if I put up the ALC compression, it shows that indeed there is compression happening, indicating that the levels coming into Power SDR are exceeding the 0 dB limit. And this is illustrated further by the fact that we can see multiple sideband spurs appearing across the audio passband and potentially even beyond. I'm now going to bring up WSJTX and transmit some JT65. Oops. Again, we can see here that the audio passband is full of intermodulation distortion products and in fact there are images appearing also outside. They may be at a, a very low level but that doesn't change the fact that they do exist and they have the potential for being transmitted. The ALC compression as you can see is showing here 1.2 dB indicating that the incoming level from WSJT is excessive. Now not all data modes programs have them, 
but some do a level control which allows you to adjust the levels of the AFSK coming out. However, as you can see here, even pulling the level down to quite a low position, the IMD products still exist. They've been reduced somewhat here in this instance, but they are still present. So, what we need to do is identify and deal with the offending settings which are buried in Windows and sort out the cleanliness of our transmitter. When VAC is set up for the first time, Windows backend drivers default some settings to a non-optimal condition. If I demonstrate, for example, let's turn VAC off, restart. In the WSJT manual, you'll see that it states that WXJT expects your sound card to do its raw sampling at 48k. In my previous video, I recommended setting the sample rate for back at 48k as many data mode programs sample at 8k therefore uh, a, any sample rate conversion would be clean whereas if they were sampling at say 11025 that doesn't divide into 48 cleanly if I load up WSJT which has just been shown in the manual that it expects 48k sample rate. Let's look at what VAC has to say. It has indeed automatically loaded up at 44.1 kilohertz. The manual states that WSJT is expecting 48, therefore it is not unreasonable to expect the initialized format for WSJT initialized by WSJT to come up at 48 but it hasn't it's come up at 44 if I start VAC now the second channel from power SDR has come up at 48k which of course is what we expect because we have the VAC sample rate in power SDR set to 48 clearly something is not right if I stop those now, turn VAC off, let's investigate the Windows Audio Control Panel. My favourite way of getting to it is right clicking the speaker icon and opening up playback devices. Let's take a look at the two virtual audio cable instances that we have set up for doing data modes. Double clicking on them, going to the Advanced tab, what we discover is that Windows has automatically set up the VAC audio instance 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz. But despite that, we have our power SDR set to a 48 kilohertz sample rate. This clearly is not optimal because, of course, wherever there is a sample rate conversion, if the conversion is not uh, does not divide equally into the 48 kilohertz rate cleanly then there may be audio artifacts or IMD or distortion products which may appear within the audio passband therefore it is not optimal so let's now make a change to this and change it to 48 kilohertz I choose 32-bit depth because it gives us the greatest dynamic range possible. So, that we'll look at line 2. is also automatically set up as 44.1. So I'm changing that to 48. Now let's take a look at the recording lines of those two virtual audio cable instances. Again, 
it is automatically set up at 44.1. Let's change this. 44.1, 48. Right, let's conduct a test again. Load up the control panel for VAC and start WSJT. What has happened this time? This time, WSJT has started the VAC instance at our desired 48k sample rate. Therefore, we're no longer looking at any sample rate conversions. This is ideal. Having dealt with any potential problems arising from sample rate conversion, we now need to look at the audio levels. Once again, I'll start HRD's DM780 and put the radio into a perpetual CQ, which is not that. And we also require VAC enabled. CQ repeat. So back to our dirty signal that we can see here. What we want is to be able to adjust the audio level to a point where the transmitted signal is clean. My favorite way for achieving that is to right click the speaker icon and open a volume mixer. An important point to make here is with VAC, you must, in order to be able to accomplish this task, you must have enable channel mixing enabled here. So what we want is to adjust, in my particular instance, line 2 is the output from the digital mode program to PowerSDR. So we're looking for line 2 from this drop down and line 2. And as we can see, all of the levels here are maxed out. What we're looking for is digital master. Let's start adjusting this output. As I do so, you'll see the ALC compression is starting to dip. Wait for it to start up again. Let's put on the ALC rather than the ALC compression. Because what we want to achieve ultimately is a very slightly negative indication of ALC. Now at this point I can uh, point out that it is possible once you have selected the slider to adjust the levels with the up and down cursor keys. So this is what I'm going to do now. You notice how already the cleanliness of the signal has changed. If I push it back up again to the maximum you will see that the signal is fat, that there are multiple sidebands appearing here. Now I bring the levels down and it starts to clean up. I continue tapping the level going down one point at a time and all of a sudden look at that. At a ALC of minus 0.3 dB all of that horrible IMD and nastiness has disappeared. Sorry for the glitches in the video, it's because of the power SDR and my video recorder working together. So, if I put the level back up a few points again, bad timing. As you can see, those sidebands are present. Bring the level down, and there we have ourselves a nice, clean looking. TX signal. Now of course you, at this point you're going to be saying well what about my output power? Well of course yes there is going to be a difference. However you would be surprised that it is not necessarily as bad as you might think. But as you can see here I'm peaking out at about 22 watts. Check 
changing HRD's DM780 from a dirty signal to a clean signal in the way that I have just done in reality has, changes the output by about 20% which is not really that critical if you think about it we do not need to be running as much power as is humanly possible from our radios the object and the goal of this exercise is to produce the cleanest signal it helps with decoding because there are fewer self-created IMD products in the transmitted signal and this is something that, that I have tested and proven for myself it may not be a substantial change but it is nonetheless a change so that's taken care of DM780 let's bring up WSJT so we'll follow the same principle again quick quick missed it so the same principle applies with WSJT when it starts transmitting a device will appear here for WSJT this time I'm going to adjust it completely with the cursor keys so once again I start dropping the level down in the Windows mixer and as you can see already the signal is starting to look cleaner keep tapping it down a few more points and hey presto as you can see now all of these multiple IMDs and audio sidebands have disappeared the horizontal lines that you can see here are simply a consequence of the way that the waterfall works but we have ourselves a nice clean signal having shown you this technique I need to point out that there is a caveat that is some data mode programs reinitialize the mixer level each time they are engaged to transmit and there we see as WSJT initializes the next TX cycle the output level jumped from where we had set it to provide ourselves the nice clean looking transmission it has gone back to 100% now this can be overcome by rather than setting the individual mixer components for the individual programs you can adjust the master mixer level and this is the way I recommend we do it because whatever happens when the transmitter is cycled into the next transmit session it will not be able to usurp the level of the master wait a few moments next transmit cycle and as you can see the individual mixer component was unable to move beyond its 100% setting as in it's currently 100% of the setting on the master I recommend that we use the ALC in Power SDR as the ultimate check regarding the levels and I would recommend trying to keep the output level somewhere between minus 0.5 and minus 1 dB this will give us ample output power whilst ret retaining the cleanest signal that is possible under the circumstances we we'll take a look at my output power here still at 22 watts with a moderate drive level so there is plenty of power available still to us even though we have adjusted our signal accordingly 
You could, of course, in PowerSDR, use its own AFSK output level. However, I have found that unless the Windows output level has been changed in the Windows mixer, even reducing the AFSK level within programs such as WSJT or HRD, the distortion and IMD products prove harder to eradicate using the data mode's own AFSK level control and easier to eradicate using the Windows mixer level control. And if you're worried that by adjusting the master level for one particular program will reduce the levels to an impossibly low point for another program, if you're using PowerSDR, this can be overcome by simply setting up a new TX profile. So you can have a TX profile for WSJT, one for DM780, as you can see I have indeed here, yes. So that concludes setting up our transmitter for the cleanest possible signal. I hope that the video will prove useful to you and that it can help you keep your transmitter nice and clean and be neighbourly on the amateur bands. Thank you for your time. 7 threes.